we're going to look at graphing linear equations in three variables. Now when we have three variables, normally it's called the XYZ coordinate plane. And the XYZ coordinate plane is a three-dimensional model. So what you have to do is you have to think in terms of perspective. And what I mean by that is if you were in an art class and you had to draw a box, you would have to do something along the lines of this. Now these diagonal lines right here are indicating the depth of it. So we have our length, we have our height, this would be the depth of it. So you have to get in the um, state of mind of thinking in perspective because the XYZ coordinate plane is um, based off of using perspective. Now when we have our XYZ plane, sometimes um, the axis can be labeled differently, but the way we're going to do it is we are going to call the axis that's coming forward so think of this one right here as coming out of your paper, sticking right at you, and then going backwards behind your paper. Now the reason it's dotted is because technically we can't see that axis. If I went over here and I finished the, my box, I would put dotted lines back here because I can't actually see those sides of the box, but they are still back there. So the dotted line indicates that it's behind. We can't see it. Well, our dotted axis is actually behind our paper. And then this is going to be our y-axis for what we do and our up and down our vertical one is going to be our z-axis. Now as far as the y-axis goes to the right is still positive to the left is negative. For the z-axis up is still positive and down is still negative. For the x-axis out towards you is positive and back is negative. Now when we're graphing on the XYZ axis, we're sometimes going to have to plot points. And now instead of having an ordered pair, we're going to have an ordered triple. And the numbers are going to be XYZ. So if I had to graph the numbers 2, 5, and negative 3, I would come forward 2, and then I would go to the right 5. Now when I move to the right, I have to move parallel to my Y axis, 5 spots. So there'd be 1, 2, three, four, five. So right now I'm lined up there. And then I would have to go down three. So one, two, three. So that would be my, my point. Now, one thing that you can always do in order to help you plot these is you can ch um, draw a cube. And what this point right here will be that we just plotted will be the far corner of the cube. So now if I were to start my cube here at 0, 0, and I would come out to the right 5 units, because that's what my y value is, and then I can come forward 2 units, because that was my x value, and then I need to go down 3 units, I could go ahead and finish off my cube and make that 3-dimensional box. If that helps you see it better, then you can do that. Because now I can look at the dimensions of my cube. Well, this is down 3, it's to the right 5, and it has a depth of 2, which correspond to my points up here. Now, we're not just going to plot points in a three-dimensional plane. We are also going to um, we're also going to graph our linear equations in three dimensions. Most of the time it's going to have the setup of AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to D. A, B, C, and D will always be some form of a numbers. And what you have to realize is that when we plot this, this is actually going to be a plane. It's going to be a flat surface that extends in all directions. It's not just going to be a line. Now graphing this is really quite simple. What we need to do is find the x, the y, and the z-intercepts, plot them, and connect them. Well now, if you think about your x-intercept, the x-intercept is somewhere on my x-axis here. Now if you think about the value of your z and your y anytime I'm on my x-axis, well the value of z is 0 and the value of y is 0. So anytime I'm trying to find my x-intercept, I have to set my y and my z to zeros. 
And then a similar thing happens with my y-axis. When I am plotting on my y-axis, the value of my x is 0, because I'm not forward or backwards any, and the value of my z is 0, because I'm not up or down or any. And then the same thing happens with your z-axis. When you are looking at your z-intercept, your x value is 0, because you're not forward and back, and your y value is 0, because you're not right or left. So, if we need to graph 4x plus 2y minus 3z equals 8, in order to find my x-intercept, I am going to set my y value and my z value to 0, and then I'm going to solve it out. So, 2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, so I end up with 4x is equal to 8, which leaves me with x equals 2. So I'm going to go on to my x-axis and come out forward two spots. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to find my y-intercept. And I do that by setting my x and my z to 0 this time. When I do that, I end up with 2y equals 8, and I get y is equal to 4. So then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to plot 4 on my y-axis. And then finally, do it with your z-intercept. I'm going to set my x to 0. I'm going to set my y to 0, which leaves me to solve it out for z. So I end up with negative 3z is equal to 8. So z is equal to negative 8 thirds. So then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to plot my negative 8 thirds. Now I've got my three points, and in order to finish this off, I need to connect them together and then shade it because my solution is anything on this plane. Now this plane doesn't just stop at the triangle, it goes on forever in all those directions, but we need to represent it with this triangular shape. Now some of the times, depending on where your points lie, you might not get a very nice looking triangle. They can be really, really skinny or almost in a straight line but you still graph it the same way. You find your x-intercept, your y-intercept, your z-intercept, connect them all, and then shade them in. So make sure you shade it, because that indicates that our solution is anything on that plane. Okay, so here's your first practice one. See if you can graph 4x minus 5y plus 6z equals 20. Start by finding each of your intercepts and plotting them. All right, you should have found your x-intercept to be 5. So you would come forward 5. Should have found your y-intercept to be negative 4, so you go to the left 4. Should have found your z-intercept to be 10 thirds, so you go up 10 thirds. Plot each of those intercepts, connect them, and then shade in the triangle. Okay, another thing that we're going to have to do with um, these linear equations and three variables is we're sometimes going to have to write them as a function of x, x and y. Well, all this is telling you is to write it in function notation. Now, it wants you to write it as a function of x and y, which means we need to solve it for z and then replace the z with our function notation. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to isolate the z. And I'm going to do that by subtracting 3x and subtracting 2y from both sides. So I'm left with negative 4z equals 20 minus 3x minus 2y. And then I need to divide by negative 4 on everything, and so I end up with z is equal to negative 5 plus 3x over 4. These two negatives make a positive right here, and then plus y over 2. I can These two negatives make a positive, and then I can reduce the 2 over 4. So that right now is my function solved for z. But now, it wants me to write it as a function of x and y. So that means I have to now replace my z with function notation. Now, normally, we just have f of x. And what that tells us is I have a function with the variable x in it. Well, we're not doing that, because now I have a function with the variable of x and y in it. So it's going to be a similar notation, but x and y are both going to appear. So all I've done is I've replaced that z with f of x, y. And that would be 
function notation. Now from here, they might tell you to do, um, maybe evaluate it. Maybe they say find f of 0 comma 2. Well, what they're telling you is they're telling you plug in 0 for x, plug in 2 for y, and tell me what the answer is. So we could come back to our equation here, and I could plug in my 0 for my x, I could plug in my 2 for my y, and then I could solve this out. So 3 times 0 is 0, divided by 4 is 0, 2 over 2 is 1, so I have negative 5 plus 1, which gives me a negative 4. So I could say f of 0 comma 2 is equal to negative 4. So it works as just the same way as regular function notation, but now instead of just f of x, we have f of x, y, because x and y both appear in our function. Okay, so here's your last practice one. Go ahead and pause the video and write this as a function of x and y. Okay, the first thing I did was I subtracted the 5x over and I added the 6y over to the other side. Then I divided every single thing by negative 12. I reduced, so the 15 over negative 12 turns out to be negative 5 fourths. The negative 5x over negative 12 is positive 5 over 12. And then the 6 over the negative 12 reduces down to a negative 1 half with the y. The last step you need to do is you need to replace that z with your function notation to get your final answer.